Hello, my name is Matt Fryer. I'm Group Compliance Director at Bruxen, and I'm joined by. And I'm Joe Tully. I'm the Managing Director of Bruxen Legal, and Bruxen Legal are IR35 specialists. And we're going to attempt to answer Google's most searched terms for the hot topic that is IR35. Go on then. What have we got? So, Joe, what IR35? Question one, what does IR35 stand for? What does IR35 stand for? Well, IR35 is the name that's commonly given to um, tax legislation that was introduced in April 2000. What does IR35 mean? Uh, so it was introduced in April 2000. It was, it's tax legislation that's intended to ensure that uh, people who offer their services uh, in a self-employed capacity and through, typically through a personal service company, that they pay the right tax. And, and IR35, I think, was the name of the Inland Revenue press release that launched the change. Indeed it was, Matt. So the big question, IR35, what is changing? Well, IR35 itself isn't changing, but what's happening is there's new legislation being introduced called the Off-Payroll Working Rules. Um, this legislation was introduced in the public sector two years ago in 2017 and it's coming into the private sector um, from April 20 next year and the key change is that um, the assessment of tax status for the self-employed individuals, for these contractors, um, the, the obligation to assess is moving from the individual contractor, from the, the personal service company itself, over to the, the end client, to the hire. And finally, IR35, what to do if it applies? Okay, well, if, if IR35 applies, you have to pay the appropriate uh, employment taxes. Uh, at the moment, uh, in the public sector, where the new rules apply and have applied since 2017, those deductions would be made by the, the intermediary that, or the, the end client that pays you. At the moment, in the private sector, the, the, the old rules, the existing rules, continue to apply, and the deductions should be made by the personal service company. But again, that's changing from April 20 next year. Uh, when it will be the, the intermediate that pays you or your end client who makes those deductions. Okay, Matt, over to you with the who IR35 questions. Okay, first one. IR35, who is liable? Okay, so liability currently depends on who you're working for. So if you work in the public sector, then the end hirer or the intermediary that pays the personal service company is liable. If you work in the private sector, it's currently the contractor, the contractor's limited company that's liable. Uh, the big change that's happening in April 20 is that that liability will shift to the uh, private sector end client or to um, the intermediary that pays the, the company. There is one exemption to that change. If you're a contractor working for a small business, you will continue to be liable for, for this risk post April 20. Next question. IR35, who is responsible? So similar to the liability point, re responsibility here really means doing an employment status test on, on any particular contract. And if that employment status comes out as employed, then you're liable for taxes. So similar to the previous question, um, if you're working for a public sector client, responsibility currently sits with that public sector client and will continue to do so. If you're working in the private sector, responsibility uh, currently sits with you as the contractor, but responsibility will shift to your end client from April 20, again with the exemption for contractors working for small businesses. And in that scenario, it will continue to be the contractor that's responsible for managing IR35. Great. IR35, who decides? Okay, so ultimate decision on this, again, rests with different parties and linked to the to the questions above. Um, so the decision here is decision around employment status um, and as referenced previously really, if you're in the public sector, public sector body decides. Um, private sector um, currently contractor decides but post April 20 it will be the, the end client that will decide. Um, interesting point around who decides, there is going to be a challenge process in the new legislation um, so that's an opportunity for contractors to try and have some influence uh, around a, a decision if they disagree with it. And the final who question, Matt. IR35, 
who it's affected. Okay, so, so IR35 only really applies if there is a, uh, a personal service company being paid for the services of an individual. So um, if you work through an umbrella company, if you're working on an agency payroll, or if you're directly employed by somebody to provide work, then IR35 isn't in play. So it only affects um, contracts where there's a personal service company. Um, and people that will be affected will be the, the contractor, uh, will be any agency or other intermediary in the supply chain, um, and the end client. So all of those parties need to consider um, IR35. Okay, Joe, moving on to how IR35. Okay. So how will IR35 impact contractors? Well, of course, it's already impacted contractors in the public sector uh, because for 17 years, up until the change in April 17, they were, through their personal service company, determining their employment status for tax. Same thing's now going to happen in the private sector from next year, from April 20 of next year. Uh, and the biggest change is that having spent um, uh, all of the last two decades uh, determining their own, tax state, uh, their own employment status for tax, uh, that determination now passes over to their, their end client, the hirer. So how does IR35 work? Okay, so, so IR35 um, asks the contractor today in the private sector, but of course that's changing from next year, when the question will be asked primarily of the, of the hire, the end client, um, to take a, an objective look at the way in which the contractor provides their services to that end client. And what it's asking is, was the manner in which those services provided uh, a genuinely self-employed relationship between the contractor and the end hirer, or was it more of an employment type relationship, or what HMRC called that of a disguised employee? And so the hirer from next year, the contractor today in the private sector, must look at the contracts that govern that relationship, but perhaps more importantly, they have to look at the working practices, the day-to-day -day working practices to say, was I genuinely self-employed in that uh, relationship or was it, did I behave and provide my services more like, as HMRC calls it, a disguised employee? How will IR35 impact me? Well, it depends on who me is. So if, uh, if I am a contractor today in the private sector, um, I, I will have spent you know, many years perhaps determining my own employment status for tax. Well, from next year, that determination will be made by my end client, by my hirer. And so I need to ensure that my, my end client, my hirer, and my agency indeed uh, are doing the right thing to manage this legislation properly. If I'm a, an end client, if I'm a hirer of contractors, well, I need to understand um, what IR35 says and means, what the off-payroll working rules say and mean, and I need to put in place processes and, uh, uh, and policies to make sure that I manage this legislation properly. And if I'm an agency, well, you know, I, I will have obligations around perhaps um, how I pay the contractor that, that I have engaged, um, and I need to ensure that the contractor and my end client understand the legislation and that the end client in particular is managing it properly and with what uh, HMRC calls reasonable care. When IR35. So the first one asks, when did IR35 start? Okay, so IR35 uh, came in originally in April 2000. Um, and there's been a couple of changes, uh, one major change in April 17, um, and that was when responsibility shifted from contractor into the public sector. Um, and IR35 will start again under another guise of off-payroll working in the private sector, um, expected to be in April 2020. IR35, when does it apply? Okay, so IR35 applies um, where, where you have an off-payroll worker who's doing uh, work for an end client and providing their services through their own personal service company. Um, and, and it applies on an assignment by assignment basis. So you need to uh, reassess the status every time there's a new contract. When did IR35 rules change? Okay, so IR35 rules changed in the public sector on the 6th of April 2017. And IR35 rules will change in the private sector on the 6th of April 2020. Um, and the date of change, uh, crucial point here, which caused some issues in the public sector, is any payments made after the 6th of April. Um, so you could provide services prior to, 
but if payment is made after that 6th of April date, then it will be impacted by these changes. Okay, so hopefully Matt and I have um, helped answer some of Google's, Google's most searched IR35 questions. Um, if you want any more help with IR35 and with the offer payroll working rules, uh, please get in touch. Our contact details on the screen. Um, we've got nearly 20 years of experience in helping uh, contractors and agencies and, and now hirers of all sizes with understanding these, these quite complex rules. So please give us a call or get in touch.